In this lesson, let's talk about Lambda's integration with Amazon Elastic File System or EFS and when you should use it. Hint, you probably shouldn't. But first, let's quickly go over what is EFS. It's a fully managed network file system that AWS provides and you can connect to it from EC2, ECS, Lambda or even from your on-premise servers and allow these connected resources to share files via an EFS file system. As a file system, EFS offers two storage classes. The standard class is for most use cases where you are actively reading and writing files constantly and you pay for the amount of data that you have in EFS. The infrequent access class is cost optimized for files that are accessed less frequently. So you pay a much lower fee for storage but you pay an extra one cent per gigabyte of data transferred in and out of EFS. EFS also gives you two throughput options. The bursting throughput mode is the default and there's no extra charge for it. You get a baseline throughput of one megabyte per second and it works with a credit system where unused throughput is stored as credit so that when you need to use them in a burst, you can burst up to 100 megabytes per second for every terabyte of data in the file system. And when you run out of credits, you will still have that default one megabyte per second of throughput. With provisioned throughput, you have more control of your throughput at a potentially much higher cost. You get 50 kilobytes per second of throughput for every gigabyte of data that you store. But anything beyond that, you can also pay $6 for every megabyte per second of throughput that you want. To create an EFS file system, you need to specify what VPC and availability zone you want the file system to be available in and you have to pick between the aforementioned bursting or provision throughput mode as well as the performance mode which most of the time you should be using general purpose but if you need to connect a large number of things to the file system then you might want to consider max IO mode where you sacrifice latency in exchange for a higher aggregate throughput and IO ops per second and also it's worth mentioning that EFS supports encryption at rest with KMS and you can control access to the file system using access points where you can configure application specific access points to the file system where you can say for each application what level of file system access it has by directory. This creates a unique access point that you can then reference when you set up a Lambda function to integrate with EFS which requires the function to have access to the VPC that the EFS file system is created in which in turn requires the function to have VPC related permissions and it also needs permission to perform several actions against the EFS such as the ability to describe the mount target and to actually mount the file system. Once the function is in VPC and has the necessary IAM permissions, you'll be able to mount the EFS file system onto the Lambda function via the access point that you set up earlier. From here, you can read and write files on the EFS file system like you do any other files, including loading static data during file initialization. But before you dive right into this Lambda EFS integration, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Firstly, EFS is a managed network file system, so things like file watches don't work. But on a positive note, mounting an EFS file system to Lambda doesn't add any latency to its cold start. Although you do need to remember that you're reading from a network file system, so latency is not at all comparable to reading from your Lambda function's temp directory. Having said that, compared to S3, Reading from EFS is slightly faster and the latency is also more predictable compared to S3. And you also benefit from OS level caching for reads on files that doesn't change very often. So if you need to access a previously accessed file while it's still in the OS kernel, then you don't incur the full read latency as confirmed by Mark Brooker, who is one of the senior principal engineers at AWS. But even when you discard the OS level caching, as you can see from the performance data that I've collected here, read and write operations with EFS is consistently faster than S3. And as you can see from the standard deviation, there are less variation in these numbers. And therefore the read and write latencies with EFS is also more predictable. For example, here's reading a 100 megabyte file from EFS versus S3, where EFS is faster at every single percentile, especially as you get closer to the tail end such as the 95th or 99th percentile and the max latency. And when it comes to reading a 400 meg file, the difference is even bigger. There are some limits to keep in mind. For example, EFS has a max connection limit of 25,000 and every concurrent executions of your Lambda function would need a connection to EFS 
as do any other containers or EC2 instances that also need to access the same file system. Most people probably wouldn't come close to this limit, and you're also more likely to run into throughput and the performance issues before you reach the connection limit, but it's still something to keep in mind. In general, I would recommend against using EFS with Lambda unless you have very specific problems that EFS can solve. Previously, that's when you need to load a large file that are too big for Lambda, but nowadays Lambda allows for up to 10 gigabytes of temp storage space, and you can also package your Lambda function as a container image, and if you do that, you can also have a container image that is up to 10 gigabytes in size as well. So you can also bundle any large static files like a machine learning image as part of your container image. So there's actually very little use case nowadays where you would need to use EFS for large files. Especially given the latency for reading large files from EFS, even though it's faster than S3, is still pretty significant. And the optimizations that Edipus has done for loading container images for Lambda, which Mark Broker has explained in detail in this blog post, which is well worth a read, the link is in the description below. So if you need to load a large static file for your Lambda function, maybe a machine learning image, then you will almost certainly be faster to package that file as part of a container image for Lambda and load it from there than to load it from EFS. All of which is to say that if you think you need to use EFS, there is probably a better way. And so I want to leave you with this diagram that captures the important concepts of Lambda and EFS, showing you that an EFS file system can be shared across Lambda functions as well as EC2 and ECS, and the different storage classes and throughput modes and so on. Okay, I'll see you in the next lesson.